Bill started training with us a few years ago. The last chance qualifier for the Olympic trials is pretty much the biggest tournament in the country every four years. The elite boxers in the country are the only ones that make it to the last chance qualifiers. Everything is like multiples and multiples of people. We find out that Phil's not fighting one day. He's basically going to be sitting around thinking about how big this tournament is. Phil's opponent's going to be Kevin Newman Jr. out of Nevada. Coming from the Mayweather camp, he's going to be schooled. And every fight I'm nervous. One dude's going home, and the next dude you might be fighting sometime soon in this tournament. It's go time. We're ready to rock and roll and uh, get in here and get this, finally get this tournament underway as far as the competition is concerned. Going to get in the ring, uh, I know we plan on doing. So basically, I'm just, all I'm thinking about is going, you know, just go and do it. And the game plan going in is to, to make sure that uh, we're backing the guy up and we're, we're putting a lot of combinations on him. I mean, it was a simple game plan, but the, you know, Phil's got a good jab, and he's got good in and out and side to side movement, and we're pretty, we were pretty confident that he can back this guy up. When we get in the ring, you know, they call your name out, you walk to the center and everything, and right, right then is when I'm like, all right, just go, I'm literally not thinking about anything. But when it first starts, I mean, it's like going 150 miles an hour. It's like it's almost hitting a fast forward one. And a lot of times until you land that first punch, or even sometimes you, you, you need to get hit, it brings you back down to reality. It slows things down a little bit. And for me, you know, when someone hits me pretty good, uh, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm going to get you back, you know, so I, I have to control that because I know a couple times in the past I've had uh, trouble with that, so I just try to take their head off. So round one starts, and, uh, you know, Phil comes out and he throws the aggressor off the bat. He starts uh, he starts jabbing, moving around a little bit. So I'm pretty much just trying to uh, pressure him, uh, come forward uh, as I punch. Round one, you know, Phil's backing the guy up. He's his footwork looks awesome. You know, he's keeping his stance nice and solid. He's snapping his jab. He's backing this guy up. Um, this guy's having a hard time dealing with Phil's pressure. He's ducking down a lot. You know, he's getting overwhelmed. He he would cover up uh, when I start throwing, so I would just try to uh, throw a lot of punches. You know, um, find openings and try to score. He's doing a lot of things really well, and he's really following the game plan. He's putting combinations on the kid, um, and he's making a miss too. That's kind of the key. You want to score and not be scored on. So he's doing a lot of lot of those things in this round and um, the things that we need to do to win the round. I'm in the corner and we're, and I'm, you know, giving Phil instructions after having a great first round, was pretty sure he won that round. Boxing's really the only sport where you don't know your score until the game's over. Every other sport, you know, right where you're at. And with these national tournaments, they show you the score in between rounds, so you know if you're winning or you're losing. Um, we hadn't seen the score yet because they still were calculating and they were bringing it to us. In the corner when I first sat down, uh, uh, that was probably the first time I actually got a chance to think about you know, what just happened in the first round. And it was uh, actually giving me confidence. The lady with the score comes through and, and, and we see the score and, and Phil's winning the round. You know, everyone's telling us how lucky we got to be to do well in this tournament. I don't believe in good luck. I believe in good boxing. You know, Phil's feeling pretty good because he's realizing that, you know, he, he's going to hang in here with these guys. It turns out the score was like uh, four to two. I was just, I was just really shocked because I was like, wow, all that, all that, and it's only four to two. Wow, so. That just made me think I was going to have to keep working just as hard. 
we only made a few adjustments in the corner because the, the, the first round went very well. Kevin was kind of leaning forward when Phil would pressure him, uh, exposing him to an uppercut. Whenever he was pressuring Kevin, Kevin was going to bend over, bam, the uppercut's there. So here we are in round two, and Phil's got to make some adjustments. And right away he comes out and he tries to throw an uppercut from like halfway across the ring, which is not good. I was looking for the uppercut. Uh, I started looking for it a little too much. He went for the uppercut a little bit too soon. I mean, he, he went for it without setting it up properly. And this is where he made an experience mistake. He listened to his corner, but how he, he implemented it into his fight strategy uh, did not work well. But he goes through the uppercut, boom, gets tagged right away. Right? I mean, nice solid shot right in the face. And by Phil running into that shot, kind of slowed down the pressure a little bit, you know, a little bit more time to have taken his time, picking his shots. He was fighting more conservatively than he needs to to beat a guy like Kevin Newman. Well, I see I see what Eric's telling me and I'm just a little too focused on that, I think. I get away from doing some of the things that I was doing right in the uh, first round. He's making adjustments to the things that I'm trying to uh, work and it's, you know, it's not anything that I could just pick up on right away, so it was it was a little hard to uh, read what he was doing different. He allowed Kevin to get a rhythm and a confidence. Being, I mean, we could be down four points or five points or six points. Who knows? Kevin, Kevin scored. I'll score Phil in, in that round. That's right, Kevin. Now, in the corner in round in between round two and three, we had to. Uh, we had, to, we had to make a lot of adjustments. I didn't know what the score was, but we uh, we knew he lost that round. The uppercut wasn't there as, like we thought it would be because Phil wasn't putting the pre same pressure on as he was the first round. I was a little unsure on what, what else I should do. The guy had his confidence back. The guy had some momentum going now, and uh, he had to turn that around. They showed us the points, and I was down. I ended up being down by a couple. At that point, I was just thinking, uh, it's the third round. This is it. Uh, I have to. I gotta go. You know, pick it up. Try to get these get these points back. He needed to back the guy up, and he needed to put combinations on him, and he needed to do the things he was doing in the first round. The third round starts, and we know we're down. We're down three points. So we gotta make up some ground. I think I definitely thought that I could win. Still, uh, even though I was down a couple points. Phil comes out really aggressive. I was trying to put him in the, on the ropes, uh, back him up, <clears throat> throw, throw a lot of punches. Now Phil's kind of playing a little bit desperate. Not completely desperate, but he knows he's down. He's trying to make up some points. You could see that Phil was really trying to win. He was trying to score, and he wasn't being the boxer that he is. I was just trying to throw as many punches as I could, trying to land as many as I could. And then four points is a lot in boxing when you when you got two top guys. I mean, uh, a two-point swing one way or the other is, is difficult to get. You know, the pressure of wanting to win and wanting to beat this guy, I think, got to him a little bit in that third round because he was behind. Kevin handled it very well. He, he neutralized a lot of uh, 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 Phil's offense with jabs and movement and um, straight right hands. You know, he did he did good at breaking up Phil's rhythm. He's seeing some stuff that he hasn't seen before in, 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 in in the match, you know. The third round is close. It goes back and it goes back and forth. Phil, you know, fin Phil finished off the round very strong. I felt like I did pretty good, honestly, in the third round, but uh, I don't really know until they give the results. There's no luck in these tournaments, and luck wasn't gonna get us a, a, a decision. I find out, you know, I'm down, so obviously I lost the fight. Um, I'm pretty emo emotional. As soon as I heard that, you know, he won, um, I had a horrible feeling in my stomach. Oh, was... um... Obviously, I mean, no one likes to lose anything. It's a weird feeling after the fight because as a coach, you know, you want to make sure that your boxer gets out of this tournament what you brought him in there for. Now you want to win. If you don't win, you want to make sure that he's improving from this. You know, I'm very proud of that kid. I think you know, he fought a good fight. 
he has a top guy in the country, uh, one of the biggest stages, you know, that you can fight in, other than going to the Olympics itself, and he, he did very well with it. I was disappointed that we, we lost the fight. I was disappointed that we lost the tournament. I was happy with the way that he performed. The key thing in, in all of that was he actually went to a big tournament and he won a round. You know, and it's feedback for us. And what he did in those in the second and third rounds were things that are that are easy to fix and things that experience helps fix. Just the experience of the whole trip, you know, coming down. Uh, the waiting, um, you know, of training, all the, you know, the diet, everything like that, the fight, it was a great experience. It was worth the time, expense, and effort that we all put in to get him to this point and to compete in this tournament. And he represented our, our program really well. And he put CNY Boxing on the map, really, because none of those guys up there had heard of us. Just, just knowing that I know uh, and I have competed with guys that are on you know the, the top level of, uh, of the amateur boxing <clears throat> just you know gives me a little a little extra boost there was no doubt in my mind that that kid was ready for this tournament and he showed it when we went out there all in all it was a great experience for everybody a great tournament and we're gonna be back and we're gonna we're gonna do it again you know and we're going to do a lot of these national tournaments and you're going to see some national champions coming out of CMI Boxing.